Hello, friends, and welcome to Service of Change's ChangeCast, your podcast for change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II, with Service of Change, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. We are at full strength tonight with the entire ChangeCast team. We've got Joel and Lori on the mics getting ready to uh, jump on and have a riveting discussion talking about what is with or what is wrong with the world today. The discussion is going to go in a direction you're probably not expecting based on that title. So uh, hold on to your hats and, and give a good listen to this one. It's going to be well worth your time that we spend here. Lori Latimer is going to be blowing up our Twitter feed. So check her at, out at Lori Latimer 1, Den, at Dennis Nappy the second N A P P I I I, and also follow us at Service of Change. Lots of great ways to connect with us in addition mm. to the. Facebook feeds, but look, I got to do this right now. I got to bring on my esteemed co-host, been called by some the philosopher of Facebook, Joel the provocateur, <laughs> Schaefer. Joel, what is going on, my friend? Nobody calls that except for my myself. I'm the only one who calls myself that. So I'm calling you that as well, dude. Well, you thank, you, thank you, thank you. I have one person that believes my own hype. You know, but, you had a good thread going the other day talking about science and myth, man. That was awesome. Yeah, I was. I, I was. I was proud of that. I yeah, was, it was good. I, I was, yeah, there was a lot of good, uh, good people and uh, great. We had minds. three, three former uh, ChangeCast guests jump in on that thread. Two of whom are, are published authors. Yeah. In totally different genres. So yeah. that, was, uh, that was a really awesome uh, experience. I was humbled just to be in their presence and, and, and hearing what those two gentlemen say. I, I like connecting with them. To uh, you know, with um, Ray and Clark. So, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, for your support on that one. But it was good and inspired. Uh, I've been doing a a morning podcast geared more towards um, you know the the truth seeker stuff. The uh, you know my I am human book and and kind of promoting that in as a build up for my next book coming out. Uh, so I've been doing a morning podcast five days a week called the Seeker Podcast, and that's that that topic really hit home with me. So I kind of I did an episode of that uh, earlier this week. Talking about that and highlighting and, and giving you your, your due credit and your shout out for thank you such a great thing so but uh so yeah so what's uh, what's new and exciting Joel I know you've been out of commission for a while I mean we had the, we were down for about a month and then your computer was your your modem was out or what I, I switched cable providers my my living situation changed mm -hmm. I'm here by myself in this house now and uh, the the previous cable well, the the modem was down and then and then also the person who was living here, my, my girlfriend, she's not living here anymore. So I got cable in my own name. Mm -hmm. And I also just didn't have cable. I, I wanted to take a break for a couple weeks anyway. And Right. But then the Internet is really hard to live without. <laughs> We're really addicted to it now, aren't we? Uh, yeah, and, and, that, and part of me was like, well, if, if it's an addiction, then I'll just go cold turkey. But... And I was okay with that, but then, then there's there's positive things I think that you mm -hmm. lose too, which is like what we're trying to do here. I'm trying to just I'm trying to live and I'm trying to learn and and hopefully sometimes teach a little bit, right? So and and so the the avenues for doing that obviously with what we're doing here and then you know on Facebook and other places that's through the internet. So I had to get it back on, so I got it back on and uh. And I'm happy to be back. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're back. You know, we were talking before the show um, about Service to Change Radio, which you know is one of our new projects, new endeavors. And I'm so I'm so proud of it. Um, you know, just looking at how far we've come. We said this. I think this is our 53rd change cast that we're doing right now. So we've been pretty consistent, save for you know one or two periods where we've had different issues. We haven't been able to get online, but it's neat. Turning on the radio and hearing, you know, our voices coming, you know, across the airwaves on a, an actual radio station that's dedicated 24/7 to to change and all the themes that we talk about and and things of that nature. You know, it's really cool. It's, it's like, wow, this is this is a real deal right now. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm so proud of it. And, you know, to our listeners that that may be curious about this, just go to Service Change Radio at servicechange.com or servicechange.com/radio, and uh, and you can listen to it online. 24/7, we have uh, you know the morning hours. We have the Seeker podcast that goes from uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then we have ChangeCast archives, uh, you know, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. and then Seeker archives from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. and we are going to be airing our ChangeCasts uh, that we're, we just were discussing the schedule. 
for probably about uh, this one will play probably for a loop of about six hours on Friday afternoon, and I think I'll do an hour or two every night during the week. And this schedule is kind of fluid right now as we're, as we're trying to find what works best and what fits, but just so you have multiple chances to listen. Uh, it will eventually be up in iTunes. I'm working on getting that, uh, you know, reconfigured. And we're also going to have, um, you know, we have the YouTube videos where you can uh, follow us on YouTube. So please check us out, follow us, and support us. So uh, I'm in the process of setting up our slideshow right now. So if I sound distracted, forgive me. Lori and I just had this conversation of how bad we are at, multitasking so <laughs> we, we suck at it um, but Joel tonight our theme what's wrong with the world do you want to do you want to start that one off yeah yeah I, I'll start off I mean it's just something it's like a, a theme or a meme not necessarily a meme in in a sense a picture with words on the internet but like there's another um, definition of the word meme it's a, it's mm -hmm. like a, like a, a theme that, that that goes on. It's a trope. A trope's another word for it, where where you see people, th they lament. They, they and often it's older people, but not always, because mm -hmm. there's there's also young people who are off, often are energized to be rebellious against whatever is going on. So behind both of those people, sometimes there'll be this, or conveyed by both sets of people, by sometimes some older people and sometimes some young rebellious. You know, activist-minded people. There's this idea that there's what's wrong. There's something wrong with the world today. Like the world is going to hell. That or the end is near. Or you know, they're, 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 the the odds are stacked against us. Like they're, they're, and they're, that there's something particularly um, dangerous about the times we live in. Or there's a particularly set, um, particularly um, difficult set of problems that we have to face. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just you. It's uniquely unique to this time and this place where we're living today, currently. That there's something wrong with the world, and and, and I see that sentiment. And sometimes I say it too. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, the world is. What's the world coming to? Yeah, and mm -hmm. and and, uh, and I and I don't know. I don't. I I I, I want to throw it out there. I mean, I personally tend to believe that. That there, that our problems, most of them are essentially the same as they've always been for for human beings. At least back, going as far back as you know civilization, and maybe even before that. So like, as long as humans have been uh, like alive and aware of their circumstances, we've pretty much ha always had the same problems, which are basically how do we how do we deal with like our living circumstances? How do we get enough to eat? How do we protect ourselves and our loved ones from the environment and from danger? And then how do we make meaning and purpose out of our brief time? And what and how do we leave like a legacy or how do we leave substantial things or less substantial cuz cuz a lot of times what we leave behind for you know the generations to come is is information or ideas, mm -hmm. or learning, stories. This is what we leave behind, and so that's always been the same. Now, the the technological changes have been vast and immense, so maybe there is something particularly different about this this day and time. So I just thought it was a good, you know, um, you know, starting with broad strokes, starting from the big picture, uh, a way to to you know maybe drill down into into some of like, and, and this is what I like about you, Dennis, and this is what I like about what you have to offer to other human beings and offer, you know, through what we're doing here and offer to me personally is that you have a lot in terms of like very specific, concrete and practical suggestions of how to make one's life better and make the life of those around one better. Thanks, Joel. You know, You're and welcome. that's that's something that I really try to to focus on as as a recurring theme with with service to change and with with everything that I do you know it's easy to get caught up in all that stuff you just talked about and what's yeah. the world coming to things are so bad I get caught up in it all the time I just yeah. don't always put it public sometimes sure. I do and people call me out on it because a lot of times when I get caught in that somebody will say hey read this article you're overreacting again right you know because there's an element of excitement about it. Even though it may be something bad, it still gets your blood pumping. It gets you Absolutely. like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. Yep. You know. But I try, for several reasons, which I've talked about multiple times, I try not to feed into that, be afraid, and have a knee-jerk reaction. You know, yeah. I really, most things 
that I see in the world, you know, the problems I see, I think that we can change that if it starts on an individual level. We'll reduce mm -hmm. something simple. Just stop buying a certain product. Nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, that's all you have to do is stop buying a certain product, and you're going to bankrupt the guy at the top if everybody was to get on board doing that. You know, it really can be that simple, but we all need to be like-minded in that in that approach, you know. Um, so uh, with this with this discussion tonight, you know, I think I'd like to talk about well, what are some of the perceived problems, some of the actual problems, you know, and and what can we do to address it? So you don't walk away from this going, oh my gosh, they're right, things are so bad. I, I hope right. you walk away from this going, you know, uh, hey, that sucks, but I have the power to make a difference, you know. And that's what I talked about this on this morning's Seeker podcast. The timing of this is so weird because, you know. This morning it, I talked about, you know, it was, I think the title was The End of the World and What You Can Do About It. Mm -hmm. uh, so a very similar concept because, mm -hmm. again, we have that power. So um, w what do you think, Joel, is, is one of the greatest causes or problems or something that we're facing out or misconceptions, whatever? I mean, this is, this is your topic tonight. Uh, you know, wh where do you want to start? What do you want to start with? Well, I mean... It our lives, I mean, if you just look, if you just look at like the quality of life for mm -hmm. the average, at least American person, you know, in terms of how long they live, you know, how much. I don't know if you can measure uh, suffering, but I think you can measure things in terms of, you know, um, preventable health problems. Like um, now, here's okay. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. W we have access to resources into into technologies that would astound people even 60 years ago. So like life expectancy just in my lifetime, I remember I think back in the, I could be wrong and you know if anybody out there wants to fact check me, but approximately I'd say around 1990 the average man, American male, lived to be 67. Mm -hmm. That like around 1990, maybe the early 90s. In 20 years that jumped, I think it's like 77. So 10 years we've added. And women we were 75. Mm -hmm. And I think they're up into the early 80s now of life expectancy. Um, uh, food, like, despite there being some, and you guys probably talked about this in the last show, like the quality of food that we might eat and the access to quality food might be differential. But most of the time, people aren't starving to death. Like, in, and, in, in the United States, you mean? In the United States. And even mm -hmm. across the world, that's way down. Like global poverty has been cut like dramatically in half in the same time frame in the last 20 years. See, now that's that's an interesting statistic to me because my perception is there's countries where people are starving to death and poverty and starvation is a real problem in this world. Well, it, but it's all it's all a matter of perspective. It's still there, but it's gone down. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is going down. Um, but then, but see, you you have different problems. There's 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 production issues and then there's distribution issues. And, mm -hmm. and, yes. and so, like, a lot of what, like, you guys probably talked about would we, la in last week's show, be more of a distribution issue rather than a production. We yeah, have they the say we have enough food to feed the world how many times over, and, but yeah. instead it goes to, you know, X percentage of the population. Yeah, well, I mean, but, but you still, there's labor involved in getting it to the right people, and then there's the market. You know, people want certain things, and mm -hmm. they don't want to necessarily pay, or they can't pay for it, or whatever, or... Uh, there's a whole can of worms open to that, but to get back to like originally what like pointing out what the problem is, what could be a unique problem that we're facing today is that despite the abundance of of life improving technologies mm -hmm. and technology is used in a more of a broad, not just physical hardware, technologies in terms of like you know just know how like what we know like. Uh, spe specialist medical specialists, just what they know about the the human body and how that's technology. Mm -hmm. So we have access to all these things, but in some ways, sometimes these technologies are creating new problems, or they're not sufficient to tackle the oldest problems. So, so I I think there sometimes can be a disconnect between like like what we have in, in terms of tools mm -hmm. and then the wisdom to to like is the like has our wisdom and the application of the tools really improved I think it has improved in some areas but you know like 
I don't know, to extend that metaphor, like, I'm not good with tools. Like, I, if, I, if I'm forced to, I'll fix something. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not a total, like, um, non-male. I don't want to be stereotypical, but right. stereotypically speaking, a man is supposed to know how to use tools, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if you give me the right tool, you know, and, and give me some time and I don't get too impatient, I can, I can you know, put a table together or I can, like, right. fix a small thing on a car. If right. I have to, if I'm absolutely for, like, I could change a tire if I absolutely have to. Most of the time, I don't want to. I'll get someone right. else to do it, right. but I can. But, but you know, but but if you show me a toolbox, I, I'm not gonna necessarily have the wisdom to know which tool to use. So, I think the wisdom deficiency. I think there's a wisdom deficiency, and I think what can happen sometimes is, um, we have intelligence there's a difference between intelligence and wisdom so mm-hmm. the intelligence is the tools themselves that's the tools are are intelligent in a sense the wisdom is knowing which one to use when and when you i think sometimes we think we conflate or mistake intelligence for wisdom and that might be one of the problems we have in thinking that because we have so much and because we're so smart that 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 is a is a good substitute for wisdom and I, I don't want to say people are less wise than they used to be because I don't know if that's true, but I definitely see a disconnect. And in my own life, too, mm-hmm. between, like, you know, on the Internet, for example, you have all this information, but then the way it's deployed is not deployed wisely. It's or terrible. Even, honestly. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's either, either a sin of omission in the sense that somebody's just putting some stuff out there that – they're not being responsible with, and 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 maybe because, like you said, maybe because they're excited or they're afraid, which are really two sides of the same mm-hmm. neurological or physiological coin. Excitement and fear are the same exact physical reaction; they're just labeled cognitively differently. But mm-hmm. because of that experience that they're having, they just put some stuff out there, and they they don't necessarily know that maybe the unintentional harm it's causing, or they haven't fact checked or whatever. But then there's other people that do it intentionally. Mm-hmm. intentionally so we have all this information we have all this intelligence but then how is it deployed how is it how is it put out there in the universe you know i'm, I'm going to jump in for a minute you you, uh, you really tied it together with your toolbox analogy cuz i'm listening i'm going okay where is he going with this where is he going with this and you tied it together nicely with uh, you know talking about the tools and you know cuz I, I feel a very similar way we have all this Access to all this great stuff, all of these advancements, but a lot of us don't know what to do with it, or we're not well versed enough. You know, a lot of us are just beginners or or apprentices with a lot of these things. You know, we don't always take the time to fully understand and navigate these different tool sets that are available to us. And I'm highly guilty of it. You know, a lot of times I'll I'll cruise through something just so I can get through it. You know, instead of trying to learn everything I can, the ins and outs of it, because there's so much going on in our lives. We're so distracted. We're so pulled in so many different directions. And I think that that allows us to, to it really allows us to cause our own demise because yeah. then there are people who are experts at yes. a lot of these systems. Yes. And unfortunately, those people end up as CEOs and as politicians. And they manipulate those systems knowing we're just going to do the let me skim it real quick and, and take the five-minute version of this course. you know. And, and they take advantage. They, we allow ourselves to be taken advantage of. I, I'm, you know, I'm really trying hard not to say it's their fault. It's our fault right. because we don't take the time to become an expert in anything. I mean you look back, you look at, at farmers, traditional farmers. I mean yeah. they know every piece of equipment on their farm. They know everything about the animals on their farm. You know, and they know which tools and resources are available to them to care for them. But now we are involved in so many different aspects of just life. Most of us don't know where our food comes from. Right. We don't know where the clothing we wear comes from. We don't know how to repair our own clothing or make right. our own clothing or any of that stuff. And we don't think about the impact that those two things, food and clothing, has on the environment around us. And as a result... Right. We're in this state of well, the planet's being more and more polluted. Deforestation is, is right. you know definitely on the rise. Our food is you know according to some reports toxic, thanks to Monsanto and all that stuff. That's a whole different story. But that's because we're not smart consumers. You know, it's it's right. They may be the the different companies may be culpable, but we're responsible because we keep buying it. You know, yeah. we keep a lot, 
keeping them in business. So you can get mad at them all you want, but you're still going to go to the grocery store and buy stuff that they're selling you. You know, and that I think is you know that's the big service to change takeaway, and and that I'm you know I'm going to be pushing, you know, this theme throughout this change cast and everyone that I do is that you know in those situations. And I haven't completely changed everything in my life yet. I still sometimes right. buy food that's not the best. I buy clothing mm -hmm. sometimes that's not the best. I have a MacBook computer that you know I felt real bro broken up about getting this uh, because I know how they're made. You know, so right. I haven't been able to make all the changes I want yet, but I'm doing something. I am making those little changes in my life, where gradually over time it is it's having an impact on me, on my family, and if if everybody could just take the time and start somewhere, it will have that ripple effect around the world. And then we wouldn't be saying, well, what's wrong with the world? We'd be saying, wow, we are empowered, and look how far we've come. And it wasn't that hard. It just took yeah. a little bit of time to learn a new way to do something. And, and this might sound like I'm contradicting something you said, but it's not. I just feel like it's 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 part of the – there's a polarity. There's, there's, there's always, you know um, – a counter trend to everything mm -hmm. that we put out there. There, I, I, in my experience, I've also like yes, there, there are people who, because basically what you're talking about is specialization. And then the show Brian Bard did with us, mm -hmm. um, he talked about that a lot too, and I was really affected by that. But specialization, so people, people have specialized skills, and that gives them power. And like you said, we give them power. We either give them political or economic power or both. Mm -hmm. But there's also people all over the globe who have these special specialized skill sets who quietly just maintain the world, right? So mm -hmm. they have good motives. Right. So there's people that are just like, you know, there's uh, NGOs that are just spreading technology, you know, across the globe and bringing like, uh, you know, just wells, for example, or, or just bringing technology to remote places all over the world. Like, you know, the, a lot of religious the, groups do that too. They, yeah, they, yeah, and and then like you know some of the tech, like the tech, like the internet. I mean, how many lives and has that improved? But at the yeah. same time, the same people who are, have helped improve the lives through you know pioneering that technology also may have been irresponsible with it. So it's like mm -hmm. a, it's a double sided moral co coin. Mm -hmm. So there's so many people that that are just doing. They just hold together the world through their actions. That, that that are good, but then there's others who are maybe doing it for wrong, and then there's there's in between too. There's gray figures and like right. you know and like how you describe the average consumer, the average citizen, the average human. We're mm -hmm. gray too, so we have right. this web of of interconnected relationships and, and responsibilities. And like what you're alluding to is we're not aware of the responsibilities. Like we're we're not mm -hmm. even. And a lot of people are, or they're becoming, but maybe they go overboard or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. this might sound um, tangential, but I think it's a good, good uh, great uh, um, example of, of how difficult a lot of these, these issues can be. So, you know, Obama just talked about recently um, about how, and we've talked about it many times, uh, about uh, the, you know, the drug war. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we have the most... Uh, people in prison, mostly for right. drug offenses, in the history of, you know, mankind. Yeah. And uh, and and I'm totally, of course, I'm like that's that's insane. And then you know, just I just saw a story like at George Hill, the the local county prison, two people committed suicide. And how did they commit suicide? How were they able to commit suicide? Like, for they're the only for profit county prison in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, and then it's just you know locking people away who have basically have a psychological slash spiritual problem it doesn't sound right. like good, but the thing that dawned on me right and this is all connected back to the specialization and you know one of the things that is the the darker side of of having a better life of having more access to to feeling good or or not feeling bad like having all this technology having all these things that improved our lives we can take for granted just you know if, we, if we're feeling bad we, we have something for that you know we go to a doctor like these aren't these aren't things people even a hundred years ago they just suffered right they just suffered yeah. in, mostly in silence and, and and so it dawned on me like what like there has to be something else that happened in the last 20 years and I, I, I believe I started thinking well maybe more people are doing drugs <laughs> so yeah. maybe it's not, and, and not, that that doesn't mean that there aren't 
you know, the forces that are exploiting the drug problem. And there isn't just, you know, in the 80s, everybody was just lock away, like even Democrats who usually typically liberals were more into the idea of rehabilitation and prevention of crime. Even Bill Clinton, they had to get tough on crime. You know, in the early 90s, it was like this big tough on crime move. So people right. just wanted to fix the problem. They wanted, you guys are the specialists, you're the cops. You guys are the prison wardens. Here, take our problem and fix it. Mm -hmm. So go get those bad guys and put them somewhere. It's like right. trash. But beyond that, there's also more people doing drugs. Mm -hmm. I really, I didn't used to believe that because I thought always human beings always wanted, were always looking for, for highs and always looking to self-medicate pain. But I was like, there's got to be something in that increase. It's not just these sinister forces. There's more people doing drugs. I really believe it. There's more people, not even doing drugs. They're they're indulging in the self more, right? They're they're okay. they're they're indulging in pleasure more. I, I definitely believe as a society we are more, in some cases and in some ways more um, interested in just feeling good, right? Just feeling right, right. Now I I don't know. I mean I don't know any uh, stats or figures based on that. Um, you know, but if if there's more people doing drugs, I got two you know two thoughts on that. I mean, sure. Again, and, and I, I know you feel a similar way, but do they deserve to be in jail for that? You know, and no. and why? I mean, I think you kind of answered that question, but yeah. why do you think they're doing more drugs? And you're saying because they're more into you know that self indulgence, that search for pleasure and stuff. But knowing the consequences of, of drug abuse, you know, um, I just wonder why that is. Why people are, are pushing, you know, into that? And again, I, even if they are doing drugs, I look at it more as well, we've got a problem here. Let's yeah, let's yeah. address it, not by locking them away in a cage. And again, oh, that's definitely. a whole different discussion, you know. It um, but it comes back to these people in the prison system are capitalizing right. on. I, I just saw a, a short video that had all these facts about this this private prison industry. It was appalling. I think they even have lobbyists now, um, you know, to to direct more money, you know, federal money to uh, to these prisons. Um, but it, it's it's a real problem. But these these people that have this knowledge of the legal system and and you know the back doors and and they're exploiting our ignorance of those systems. Definitely. Well, may like see when when you hear the word drugs, right? Mm -hmm. We we tend to and this is maybe one of the problems is that we tend to ghettoize that phenomenon and be like, well, there's a specific type of person that does a specific set of substances. And what I was trying to do, in a way, and in a way it humanizes these people, it's it's that we kind of arbitrarily, and, and it's not it's not even always arbitrary, it's that, that they just, it goes beyond the level of functionality. So you have a, a housewife who shops too much, right? What's what's the worst thing that happened to her? Well, they, her and her husband might break up, or they may go into debt, or she they may lose their house, house mm -hmm. but she's not going to go to jail because the way her pleasure-seeking is is manifesting isn't as disruptive to the community around her as somebody who, who who takes heroin. Now, if heroin was legal, maybe it would be similar. Like alcoholics. Now, if alcoholics fight or they hurt people, right? Or they get not all alcoholics do that. Some right. alcoholics, the, the way that their problem, their pleasure problem, or their self-medicating problem manifests itself is the same as the housewife who shops too much. Right. So they end up losing their house and their marriage breaks up. So. Right. So I, th I, I would argue that, let's put it this way, it, it, it's not so much maybe that, that, that it's increased so much. I, think, I would argue, and this is a hypothesis I have to do, do research, that mm -hmm. it's increased so much. It's that our technologies have increased, but that human issue, that human issue of, of how do we navigate being alive? How do we you know, face pain? How do we um, responsibly seek pleasure? That is something that I don't think is unique to our times, but I don't think it's uniquely worse, but it hasn't improved. And most people I talk to, I think, overestimate their own, you know, their own grasp of that. And you allude to it, but you allude to it maybe in more specialized ways that, that I think we're living like in a, uh, as a civilization, we're living addictively, you know, with yes. resources, with with mm -hmm. the way you know the way we we consume, the way we get our food, the way we work, our industries, like everything, we're we're all living addictively, to at least to an extent. I don't think it's as bad as sometimes people say it is, and I think that there's room for you know other industries to come along and, and like clean it up and fix it. And but 
but definitely the underlying all that is there can be an arrogance because we believe we've come so far with our technology and specialization that we kind of are like, ah, eh, someone else will take care of that. And I don't, I don't know if the leaders of previous societies thought this way. Maybe the common man always did, well, but I, I, I don't know. That's, that's just my gut feeling is that we're not as wise. Going back couple, to wisdom. Yes, Go ahead. a couple thoughts on that, Joel, sure. is that, you know, number one, again, how in control are we of our own or how aware are we of our own cravings and our own addictions? Exactly. You know, we, don't, we don't take the time because I've said this a lot. Have you ever stopped and tried to pay attention to your thoughts and to your feelings? You know, It takes a little bit of practice, but this is something I've done when I was dealing with significant anxiety. Um, you know, I read a book. It was called When Panic Attacks because I was having panic attacks and I was speaking with a counselor. And they had me do some exercises. Write down when you feel anxious. What was your antecedent? What happened afterwards? What were right, you doing? Right. You know. And I started have just watching, literally watching my thoughts. And you start to recognize your triggers. You start to recognize when what's going to cause you to feel this way. What's going to cause you to have this craving? What's going to cause you? you know, like I'll know if I put on this song, then I'm going to want to listen to ten songs in this genre that's going to make me want to just feel depressed. And then I get to a point where it's like, I don't want to turn this off. And there's been times that from one song, you know, I talked to Lori about this when, when it was happening earlier this year. It was so bad. I was depressed for a week. I mean, wow. like, deep, dark depression. Mm -hmm. I listened to that one song, and it put me in that mode. And I'm like, man, I just, I just want to think about my dad and how sad it is. And I just went off. You know, and other times, and I knew it. I knew what was going to happen, but I allowed it to happen. You know, but a lot of times, we don't recognize those triggers we don't recognize what's happening and we sit there and we say I feel sad but it there's like a, an addictive quality about those feelings that self-indulgence that self-pity you know so I, I want to comment on something else you said also you sure. were talking about uh, our leadership I don't remember specifically what you said uh, but I remember the point I wanted to make so my apologies no, myself no, no, no please we are so far removed from from just leadership from community. Now I don't mm. feel I'm an American. I'm a veteran, mm. you know, and I have allegiance to my country. I'm proud of it, but I, I don't feel a sense of community in being an American aside from maybe some stereotypes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, if if you look at if you ever worked, I, I think a team is one of the most powerful bonded units. And mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of, in the movie Young Guns, you know, Emilio Estevez talked about, you know, your pals. You have four or five pals, you got yourself a tribe. And we don't have that tribe mindset, most of us anyway nowadays. You know, it, you see it in your in your church communities where yeah. you have your, your pastors and your leaders and everybody's on the same page. And when there's a problem, they come together and the and they trust the person in charge. And the person in charge personally knows everybody involved. And it's not a democracy. It's, well, what's best for everybody? And let me make yeah. it personal. Our politicians don't do that. Mm. And we don't have a relationship with them to empower them to do that because it's such a large scale now. Like I think mm -hmm. of this problem with, with war and with all mm. the crap going on in the world. I'm at the point... I don't care. Let's stop getting involved in that. Focus on helping us. I don't yeah. want my money to go to wars. I don't mm -hmm. want my money to go to this, my tax money to go to this, to go to that. Don't tell me it's for national defense, it's for this, it's for that. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to have problems with people. But you have these people who are in power who are making these decisions based on me. That's not the best for my tribe. I'm an American citizen. I'm a veteran. But that is not what's in the best interest of my tribe. And I think there's a lot of people that feel that way. The problem is there's so many of us and we all have our different opinions and our different feelings. Yeah. That we do rely on these leaders to make these decisions, and unfortunately, they're not in our best interest most of the time nowadays. Well, Sorry, I went on a rant right there. No, no, no. It's right it's, it's no, it's perfect to, because you're talking about values, right? And mm -hmm. and and we we start off talking about what's different in today's society than in the past, right? That's kind of the question, and um. And the difference is technology. Technology is usually something you can measure. It's something you can hold. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Values sometimes, and you nailed it with you're talking about being able to like see how things might play out. So you have a stimulus from your environment. You're going right. to see how that how that plays out over time. And it's a stimulus that normally you might not 
associate with actually having an effect. But you're like, if I listen to this song, I'm going to have an effect. Right. So, so that 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 has to that involves dealing with things that you can't nece necessarily measure. So these are values. These these are ideas. These are emotions. These are things that that you have to take time and 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 work through. But you mm -hmm. can't necessarily hold them or touch them. You have to you have to engage parts of the mind and the soul that I'm arguing, I think, and this is what I'm trying to argue, I think, that we might be losing. Now, at the same time, like you said, everywhere you look, there are still people operating under these, you know, right. the, the greatest things that we've had ever in human history, which are our values and our ability to work together and find common purposes and help each other. It's still going on in a lot of ways, but what I think it's being edged out. And yes, it's almost like human consciousness is being muted. It uh, is that that's a, and that's and that's a, a tragedy, you know, because again, I think that technology is replacing consciousness in a exactly. in a lot of ways, exactly. you know, and our connection to the universe. I read a book, you know, it, it's I'll go into this in another episode because it has a spiritual significance to me but there was a book called Ventus I, I can't remember the author right now but this book was about a, a you know a, an earth like planet and a, a little a young man who lived there and, and one of this they had flora fauna and they had mecha and mecha was some ancient robotic technology like nanotechnology that you know created its own basic robot life form on the earth and this boy eventually realized that he had Mecca within him and he was able to communicate directly with that planet because the planet was now merged with this Mecca technology. Uh, you know, so the book you know, talks about his connection to that. And it got me thinking that, well, I think I, I'm a, a firm believer you know, through experience and through some of the things I've read and researched that much like Avatar, I think at one point in our existence, humans had an ability to better communicate with the world around us. And, you know, and there's... Yes. Uh, a study came out, I just talked about it recently um, in my morning podcast. The Institute of Heart Math has done a study that shows a, a relationship between the, uh, the electromagnetic field of the human heart and the electromagnetic fields of the Earth and of the Sun that has a, a direct correlation on human mood. Absolutely. Um, and that's just scratching the surface there, but Absolutely. there is a relationship, there is a communication there. I'm taking a long way to prove a point here. We're replacing our natural connection to the earth and the universe and our environment with technology, with our smartphone. Mm -hmm. we're, we're muting, even we were already, you know, cut ourselves off. And now we're kind of sealing the deal and by replacing with, I mean, in 50 years, for all we know, we could have a microchip implanted somewhere in our bodies that allows us to access the internet, watch movies, do all, make a phone call. I yeah. mean, they talk about that stuff is coming. That's not science fiction anymore. Right. They're working on that technology. That's going to com it completely cut us off. Although it will make us seem telepathic, it'll make us feel like we can, you know, uh, just access this invisible net and web of information. Mm -hmm. But I think we already have that potential. You know, Carl Carl Jung talked about the collective unconscious, and exactly. you know, and Edgar Casey talked about the Akashic records. You know, that stuff's out there, but technology is removing us from that. And with that, I think we're losing our sense of self, our sense of moral reasoning. It, we're being almost desensitized and that is again how we're allowing all these other problems to happen. You know, And that's really when we say what's wrong with the world, well yeah. the world's always kind of been like this but it's us, it's human nature, it's our willingness yeah. to just yeah. take the easy way and, and disconnect from that which matters most. And, and when you threads. said no, when you said the word it's replacing the first thing I thought would be the alternative to that is to not not have it. The alternative to that is to have technology supplement. Yes. Supplement rather than replace. I'm not anti-technology. Yeah, that me that wasn't the purpose of that at all. No, I know that's not how you took it. But you're right. I think technology is wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. And I think we can use it in, you know, in, in tandem. Is that the right word? To, you know, together yeah. with, with what our natural potential is. But we need to be responsible with it. You know, was it in, in um, I quote all these fiction movies, but you know, um, Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park, he said, "You spend all this time wondering if you could, but you never stop to ask if you should." 
you right. know. Um, and, and I think that's kind of where we are with some of our technology. Should we go this in this direction that we're going in? It's a great thing. I love being able to connect with people. You know, I was speaking with a gentleman from Estonia yesterday who who read my book and wanted to reach out to me. Like that's nice. amazing. It is. You know, but we need to be smart about it. We need to remember to to unplug from technology and take that time to reflect on ourselves, our relationship to the world, and, and what footprint we're leaving or contributing to. And and, and I, I think that in a lot of ways, like some of the value issues that we that we used to have. Are you still there, Dennis? I'm still I'm still here. Okay, I'm still here. I, I, yep. it sounded like I didn't hear that background. Yep, you're good. I mean, okay, good. Um, a lot of the value issues that we used to have, like how do we like how do different cultures live together? Like we're we're still in our infancy, like yeah. as as a species trying to work these things out. Yeah. And so this this like here a good a good microcosm of it would be, and I think we had conversations about like some of my personal problems before, if I remember correctly, where like I'm really good at lots a few different things. I don't want to say lots of different things, but there's mm -hmm. a few things I'm really 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 good at. Right. So when when there's things that have challenged me. So uh, the, I, it really confuses me because I have this expectation that I should at least be competent. Uh, now, maybe I'm not going to be like, you know, as skilled at like, say, you know, I have good, you know, um, book smarts. Right. Now, I'm not, I, I don't have a, a implicit expectation that I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to be amazing with my emotional intelligence. But normally, I at least expect some competency. But, <laughs> but here I am <laughs> often being pretty much incompetent <laughs> with my a lot of the times when mm -hmm. like when I get stressed I, my emotional intelligence like descends or I go you know I uh, regress back to like a child like or childish mentality or it's an adolescent better, though, Joel. it is it, has it is no better. it is but it's getting better because I realized what the capability was right mm -hmm. so so this is what I'm getting at so our capability technologically like our ability to like communicate, our ability to fix the human body, and our ability to, to provide enough food, our ability to 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 give ourselves luxuries. You know, it, comparatively, relatively to most of human history, it's astounding. And most of us live, like, I don't know if it's 100% true, but I think at least somewhat true that most Americans, a middle class American, live has the basic living standard that only like like a thousand years ago, only like the the nobles would have, right? Yeah. The noble we live as good as the nobles did back then, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and and so we we expect that the rest of the stuff, you know, the rest of the issues, like how do we get along? Like how do we like back to the like how do we deal with our spirit? Like in terms of our mood, like you're talking about that, like mm -hmm. our happiness, our sense of purpose, our you know, peace with other human beings, peace within our family, peace within our neighborhood, peace within the world. Like, how do we, like, peace isn't easy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. conflicts happen all the time, like, mm -hmm. especially with your loved ones. We don't know how to do that stuff very well. Right. I don't think we know how to do it very well at all. I think that, you know, the Enlightenment, you know, and, and, and the Constitution represented, and then lots of thinkers since then, represented some major, major strides, right, in, in terms of, of like of really getting our hands around like some of our moral issues, some of our our spiritual issues. Any of the psychologists who helped, then you know you you have spiritual people who helped, and you have political thinkers and economic thinkers who helped. And so we are getting better compared to say during the Renaissance, when if you had a problem, you you kill each other. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you'd have a duel or something. Like, and, and and maybe you'd make an excuse. Uh, it might depend on what part of the city you're from. That does exist in certain neighborhoods. No, it does, but it's going down. But my point right. is, it, 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 our technology is way better than that. That's what I'm right. saying. Like, it's improved, but it hasn't improved as dramatically. But I think people walk around thinking that the two have improved together, and they haven't. Right. Right. And that's the and disconnect. That's a level of ignorance right there. Yeah, they're not you know, aware. And, and, and I think part of that is... And again, one of one of my goals is to make these types of conversations, these levels of conversations about consciousness, about spirituality, you know, more commonplace. Because when somebody starts talking, especially some of the stuff that that I've been talking about, you know, that, that I get in, the, you know, when I say I go off the deep end, you yeah. know, I wish I didn't have to say that. Yeah. Because whether I'm right or wrong doesn't matter. What matters is 
there's more to us right now. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, there's a lot, and, and we're not willing, at least publicly or commonly, to have those discussions because, number one, we have trouble letting go of our own values. When somebody says something that contradicts our own beliefs, right. we get mad. We take it personal. And I think part of that is because it's scary considering the fact that what if I'm wrong? What if I what, exactly? What if my approach or viewpoint of the world is wrong? Because I've been there. At, you know, when when my belief system fell apart, it's shattering. It's a lonely feeling. It's horrible. But we need to move. We need to number one, be willing to take that risk and understand. Well, there might be something better out there. Yeah. Or, you know, or if because with true understanding, well, that's where you have your wisdom. You know, as opposed to just having, you know, that was that that tool. Now you know how to use it. I know there's something out there, but I don't know how to use it. Well, if you want that wisdom, you need to really understand what that something is. You know, so I think that, you know, and, and again, I'm going to stress, I am not a religious guy, not mm -hmm. at all. I don't follow any religious dogma. I, I, you know, I follow my intuition. I'm very spiritual based on the experiences I've had and the research that I've done. You know, but I think that whatever path you choose. You need to be allowing to have these conversations. You need to be open to, well, what resonates today? You know, what's, because my viewpoint now might be very different than what I learned, you know, five minutes from now, five yeah. hours, five years, you know, whatever. So I think we need to start having that internal reflection of, of ourselves and question. I always say question everything and be willing to question everything because until we can – because ultimately we're going to look and realize – I have to take some blame and I have to take some responsibility. And once you do that, then you are on the road to making that difference in your own life that is going to have that ripple effect around the world. It's impossible not to once you start walking down that path because you realize there's something greater going on here. It's not just about me, me, me. You know. So I, I think that is almost a root cause but also the root solution yeah. to a lot of this stuff we're seeing is look within understand yourself and your relationship to this world and to your community and that is really what's going to have that I think that make that start that change yeah and 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 I think you, you really nailed it because like the idea of saving face like I, like some of the anthropologists and some of the, like the evolutionary biologists talk about how like you know, what made our, our species survive, like, in its early infancy when we were just a bunch of, like, you know, half-naked apes who, like, mm -hmm. were surrounded by giant beasts. And the only thing, the advantage we have was our ability to work together and use tools was there was these complicated, like, if some of them are probably instinctual now, but some of it was cultural, too. But there was these social relationships that, that had, the like, these rules about social relationships. So face was a... Was a was a very important thing. Shame right. was an important thing. So when when people are trying to talk about tough things, they're talk, trying to talk about morality, and they're trying to talk about human purpose, and they're already stressed out, and mm -hmm. then they have all these pleasure options ahead of them, but they're also kind of burnt out from having to provide the pleasure options. So right. you work all day to medicate yourself with all the luxuries you have, and then somebody wants to like have a conversation with you and be and maybe point the finger at you. And I, I went through it. Like you know, we almost had problems because I was struggling with these things because I because we were talking about really delicate, sensitive issues about mm -hmm. minorities mm -hmm. and then policing and then racism and all these mm -hmm. things. And it's like and. and it's so hard because then your, your your face gets involved. Like you have to save face and your dignity. And reality of it is, I don't know. I know I have more information. I've read a lot, but right. I don't know what the answers are. Right. But but most people and a lot of people would just be like, just stop talking about. It. You're just stressing yourself out. I tried. Like I just can't help it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I just can't help it. But but. I, and so I'm not responsible for it necessarily, so I'm not going to give myself credit, but I think what you're driving at is something that is just incidental in my character and my history and my making, whoever made me or whatever, that mm -hmm. like I could not help but to do what you're doing, which is ask those tough questions. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. continue to try to examine these things and, 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 and ask myself, like, what could I do better? What can right. I do better in my relationships with the people right. around me, with strangers, with the earth, with the animals, with what I eat? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I didn't. I never mm -hmm. cared about what I ate. Right. You know, I never. I was like, I don't. I, I. I. don't have time for it. You know what I mean? I got too much other going on. Maybe I did. Didn't have time for it. You know what I mean? But by and working on. Go ahead. 
No, no, I would say you're right in that, you know, and we're coming up on the end of the show, but, you know, at the end of the day, we are so – this. I've struggled with this all year, That's and that's why I'm so happy that I got laid off because, mm. as, as crazy as that sounds, because I spent all this time driving to work, being at work all day, driving home. By the end of the day, I'm exhausted, and I kept saying there's so many things that I want to do. That you know, I want to I want to improve my garden and the stuff that I'm growing. I'm I'm interested in building you know hydroponics and aquaponics systems in my house. You know, nice. I, with with the chickens that I have. You know, with the my herbal medicine. I want to go out and forage and, and get herbs and and plants and food and stuff. You know, I want to teach my kids certain things. I want to you know all these things that to me are so important. But I can't dedicate that time unless it's an hour here or you know now yeah. two hours on the weekend. Because I have a job that I have to go to every day. Now, I I had, an, in my opinion, an important job. I was a teacher, and yeah. there, there's so much value in that. But so many of us are doing a nine to five punch and a clock, so some corporation can keep making money and driving out the smaller mom and pop, you know, local businesses. You know that we have lost time to focus on what really matters because we're just trying to play catch up so we can pay for the house that we're never in anyway. We're you know, overwhelming and we, ourselves. With we all are, this, and I was overwhelmed you know. because I know all this other stuff needs to get done. That's what's important. So that's why I'm glad, you know, because now I can, and now I still sit here and go, man, there's not enough time in the day to do everything I want to do. But that's up to me to figure out, you know, I had the time, I got to manage it better now, you know. But uh, so I, society is, our, in my personal opinion, society's broken. We can do a lot better, right. and this. Nine to five, everybody has to, you know, I don't think we should be working this way. We need to find a better way to be more self-sufficient, to be more sustainable, where yeah. we won't have to work these crazy, you know, long hours that we're always working. Now, we're doing better than we were doing in the early 1900s, you know, as far as the labor that we're, that we're dealing with, thanks to unions and stuff. But I think we can still do a lot better. Again, we're, we're coming up on the end of the show, Joel, so if you have any, uh, any, any takeaway, anything you want to, uh, you know, final thoughts by all means, go ahead and... Uh, and well, it, it, it's just that th there's been a trade-off. Like, mm -hmm. and, and people have made this argument that perhaps even if people lived shorter lives, there was more conflict, there was more disease, they didn't have as much pleasure or pleasure by our standards. They didn't have the gadgets, they didn't have the technology, they didn't have all the, the th like access to all the variety of consumer products mm -hmm. that maybe their life was, was better. I'm not saying it was because I don't right. know if it was, but 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 I will say that there's been a trade-off, and that's I think what's uniquely different about this time is that we've made a bunch of trade-offs. We made deals. I don't want to say a deal with the devil because that's making technology into this devil, and I don't think right. technology is inherently evil. I'm just saying we made a deal, right? And right. and it's kind of like we wanted to just get the good stuff and leave and just ignore the other stuff that comes with it. And right. that's what you're talking about. And what you talked about with examining, like and, 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 like when you were under stress and anxiety and then examining what your inputs were, like that's what I'm talking about. Like mm -hmm. that, that is a lost art. And then you talked yeah. about religion and like religion has become a specialized field too. And it's been, it's evolved to become corporatized too. Oh, yeah. But yeah. There's always been people and still are in the ranks and even some of the leaders who mm -hmm. what they're conscious, what their God, whatever wherever it comes from, I don't know where it comes from, what 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 their impulse has told them is that you need to slow down. Mm -hmm. You need to dedicate time and energy to these things you can't touch. Right. These things that you can't, you know, necessarily sense with just the five senses. Mm -hmm. You know, spirit. Right. And, and people think when they hear the word spirit, they think, oh, magical. And I, and what I, I'm not talking about magical essence necessarily. And they, get, they get weirded out. They get weirded out. I'm talking about the spiritual questions are the questions of what is important to you. Mm -hmm. It's it, And that's not something like, – like once again, like you could argue that a, a person we would call a savage had a better life, right? Right. Right. We, we we would trot out all our technology and we might laugh at them and be like, oh, you ain't got this, you ain't got this. But in, at the They're end, they're laughing it, at us. Exactly. So they that, say that's that, what, how it was with the Native Americans, you know. Yes. I, I've, I've been reading more and more about yeah. that. It's like, wow, that's crazy. But yeah. that's but that's what I'm talking about in terms of spirituality is not something that's objective. It's not something that's measurable. It's it's something that goes on in the heart, right? Mm -hmm. So in the heart, 
somebody feels that their life is meaningful and has purpose and is worth it all. And that's not something that you can necessarily judge from the outside, and it's not something you can measure in, in how, and how much technology you have, or even how long your life has been, or how many diseases you're able to conquer or kill. Right. It's quality versus quantity, and I think that we've gotten into quantity. We've been we've quantified everything, or trying to quantify everything, and we're losing sight of quality and value. Yeah, I think we've diminished what, or we we're settling for immediate. Yes. I mean, it's the immediate satisfaction. We go, yes. okay, this satisfies my craving, but does it? You know, you need to mm -hmm. ask yourself at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day. What makes me happy? And I, I use this in my classrooms all the time. I, I talk about this video. I've posted it. I love it. It's by Alan Watts. You know, and he says, you know, what makes you happy? Do what you love. Yeah. You know, find some and it's beautiful. Just listen to the way he talks about it. You know, you can find it on YouTube. Um, it's called What If Money Were No Object? He says, I asked this of, of my you know, of my students, what if money were no object? You know, what if you could do anything you wanted to do and it wouldn't matter about money wouldn't matter at all, what would you do? You know, he says, find out what that is and do it and become the best at it. And he says, and eventually, you'll be so good at it, people will pay you to do it. No matter what it is, you can find a way to make a living doing that. And to me, that's that's utopia right there. If yeah. you could, we could all find something we love to do, instead of just, I could go on again, but our <laughs> system, our education system is not even yeah. set up that way. It's, you got to go to college, you got to get a job. And th again, that's this is the revolution. You need to change the way you're thinking and and the way you look at your life and what you want out of it because you can achieve it. It just takes hard work. You know, again, we're at what 53 podcasts right yeah. now that we do at night after we have our job, but we're we're growing. Something is growing here. I don't know where it's going to yeah. go, but something is growing here because we're doing what we love. So. Uh, we are, you know, I think over our time here, Joel, I'll give you, you know, if you've got another minute, anything you want to add to that, and then I'm going to go I ahead and say that I don't have the answers, but I th I'm confident in saying I, I have the questions, and the questions you just asked are the questions. I think that we can agree that there are questions that, that people need to ask, and I want, I want some answers, so I want mm -hmm. other people's experience because the answers don't necessarily cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. So somebody else could have a different answer. And it doesn't mean my answer is wrong because right. maybe they can live a different way somewhere else or maybe we can agree like we can work together to get some different answers of what makes a life meaningful and what what are the calculations. Like obviously we want to live. Obviously we don't want people, our loved ones, to die. You know, we want technology because – but we need to balance it. Like what is that calculation? And I think to answer the question that was posed, I think pe not enough people – or maybe they are asking these questions. But we're not hearing these questions being asked enough. Right? Some people hint at them, I think, and a lot of people dodge. I think both sides are uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? and, and we just have to have that. I mean, you know, have that courage. You know, my, my father-in-law put something up on a meme on Facebook today, and it, it said, I wanted to comment on it. It said, I think it was a quote by Johnny Depp, and it said, uh, "Don't worry about other what other people think." Just do what makes you happy, and and forget. I forget. It was beautifully written, mm -hmm. you know. Or, or don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed about who you really are. It was something yeah. like that. And I'm going. You know, that resonates with me because the stuff, especially the stuff I've been putting up lately, the the paranormal stuff, the stuff about you know my other books. Like, I was terrified to put that up there yeah. because a lot. Of, I know traditional people look at that and go, "You're nuts, dude." You know, or when some people start talking about that, you get tuned out a lot. You know, and I'm I'm proud of myself. For having that discussion now, and for doing the the morning podcast that really delves into that type of stuff, you know, uh, other intelligent life, spirituality, consciousness, you know, uh, other beings, all that stuff. I'm proud that I'm talking about that, talking about my experiences with it, because number one, it it's it's therapy for me, and it's something I want to understand. And I think that you know, I hope that we can all have that courage to allow those discussions to take place because what you find may surprise you you know so uh, Joel this has been a, a a riveting discussion tonight and again it was uh, I think you worded it as a, a trick question you know we, we titled this what's wrong with the world and although we talked about some of those problems I, I hope that you can take away to our listeners out there some solutions some viable 
uh, you know, small changes you can do that really just start with with a self reflection, you know, and, and finding out. You know, really and and have the courage. And have the courage to talk to other people, even yes. if it's uncomfortable. And yes. share, share. Come on our show. You know, yep. hit us up. And yep. I want to hear your experiences about what you know. What do you know about making life better for yourself and other people? Absolutely. What, what you do you know? I want to. I want to know because you know you said um, people tune you out, and and the first thing I thought was, well, I can tune into you, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with you. You're right. You right. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we can have channels. Like channels aren't either on or off. It's not an right. on or off switch. And that's the trick of technology is we've, we've been taught to think about things in black and white, one right. or zero, on or off. Right. And the reality is that I don't, I don't subscribe to every... I, I think it's interesting. You know what I mean? Right. But, but we still work together. You know what I mean? I'm not like, shut up, Dennis. <laughs> right. right. You're absolutely right, Joel. You know, and that, that's why you know, when I was in the military, I said, I live in the gray area. And, yeah. that's, and I got stuff done. You know, exactly. I was a part of a lot of stuff because I, because I was in the gray. I, you know, exactly. I teetered on the side of, well, I shouldn't be doing this, but hey, I'm getting results, and you know, here we go. You know, and that's how I've always been. I'm always in the gray yeah. area, because that's where everything is. It's a exactly. blending of everything. So I, I do have to go ahead and close out the show. But sure. again, like Joel said, reach out to us. You know, please uh, like us on Facebook, facebook.com/slash Service of Change, uh, and, and I highly encourage you to subscribe to the Service of Change newsletter. Uh, I love hearing from our readers and our followers and our listeners. Um, you know, I, I get emails, you know, every week from people saying, "Hey, I heard this or I read this," and you know, it, it's inspiring to us, and that definitely keeps us going. And I want to encourage you also check out uh, serviceofchange.com/bookstore for our books. You know, all subscribers get 10% off our books, and these books, you know, you'll kind of see the journey. Uh, you know, uh, uh, between myself and, and Lori right now, where the you know the authors that are featured on there, uh, Lori has her her um, the Art of Service, a collection of haiku poems, and it's it's a fascinating, motivating um, set of, of haikus that in such a small amount of words, she packs a powerful, powerful message. So check it out. You can get it. You can also get our stuff on Kindle, Amazon Kindle. Um, but that will help support you know this movement and this website and everything that we're doing here. Because like I said, we're a no-budget operation, so every little bit helps. So lots of ways to connect with us. And if you're really interested in you know the paranormal stuff that I talk about, uh, you know the Secret Podcast is every morning, Monday through Friday, nine to five. ServiceChange.com/slash/radio. You can get more information about it there. And uh, you know you can read I Am Human. We and we are not who we think we are. Free of charge at ServiceChange.com slash I am human. I'd love to hear your feedback as I'm working on the next book that's due to come out hopefully next spring. Food for the Archons, guaranteed to uh, make you think about who we are in our relationship to this greater world around us. So uh, a big thank you to Lori who's been rocking the tweets tonight. Uh, always appreciate your support. Joel, thank you. Great to have you back on the air. Thank you. For our listeners, thank you very much. I'm Dennis Nappy the second with Service to Change, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you all to be that change. Thank you.